Good greetings everyone, this is Rusty Dog and welcome to another Elite Dangerous video. And to those of you wondering, yes, I am still recovering from last night's epic 2 hour 18 minute battle with a basilisk variant Thargoid. Uh, but wow, what a battle that was and uh, it was probably the single most incredible thing I've done in Elite Dangerous purely for the time and effort that was involved um, in doing it uh, but the results were suffice to say more than satisfactory um, and if you watch the live stream uh, you don't need to watch it all it is a four hour stream but all the timings for all the events in the stream are in the video description um, so you can just whiz to the place you want to go to but if you have a couple of hours spare, I suggest that you watch the Basilisk encounter because it is exceptional. I loved it. I, I honestly, nobody gave us a hope. I didn't give us a hope. Uh, but uh, we did it in the end. So, spoiler alert. But clearly, it's not really a spoiler. I'm not going to say that it was such a great thing to do. Um, having not killed the damn thing. So today we're taking things back to the roots, really. Really all the way back to the roots of Elite. Um, with our intrepid commander, Jameson. Uh, so... We're going to be taking a look at what is uh, alleged to be. I've got no reason to say that it isn't. Commander Jameson's... Uh, crash site his Cobra crash site I don't know if it's a mark 3 I'm guessing not I'm gonna guess it's a mark 1 or mark 2 Cobra I've not been there myself yet um, this of course if you know me you know I don't do things and then <clears throat> you know these kind of I don't do these kind of events and then do a video of it I like to do it first time live with you guys same as we did the basilisk yesterday which is one of the reasons i'm so happy that that basilisk worked out because i was in my new vet it, it was untested against thargoids clearly we had no problem dealing with cyclops we were dishing we were dealing uh, them death within 20 minutes or tw 23 minutes i think it took um but the basilisk was a whole different kettle of fish and uh I was so pleased that we were able to come through for you guys, all you guys that were watching and staying around and hanging around for the stream, for the entire length of the stream, and that we were able to pull it off uh, just to, you know, just to put some satisfaction on the end of, of the stream that uh, people didn't go away sort of disappointed. So um, I was really pleased that we were able to do that for all you guys and so you could see the... Uh, the basilisk meet its end uh, but it was it was certainly two hours and 18 minutes of <laughs> perseverance and determination uh, for I tell you what okay so let's go and see commander Jameson's crash site and check it out so this is going to involve visiting a planet and doing a little bit of coordinate um, jumping so we can do that so where are we going well we're going to hip 12099 which is somewhere 273 light years away down here in hip I've just said that haven't I hip 10299 I don't have a system up yet but I'll get that when I'm there uh, and it will be visit, visiting planet 1b so let's do the journey there. It's only five jumps. So we may as well keep the video rolling, I suppose. <clears throat> so the, uh, the Goid Blasting Vet is still up at Electra. This is the ship I use for taxiing between Jemison Memorial and, um, and Electra when I'm going to go far Goid shooting. Because this ship will get me to and from there in 
in eight jumps. And that's why I'm using this ship again. I, I had thoughts about just taking the Cobra with me. You know, I thought it would be rather fitting to take a Cobra Mark III with me to, um, to go and see Commander Jameson's crash site. But uh, why it, I don't know why it's left, is it just left unguarded or left, nobody's bothered sweeping it up? <laughs> I don't know, it's still there after all this time. Um, and I, but with 273 light years it was going to be a fair few jumps, so I thought I'll just take this. It's already got the uh, SRV on board, so we might as well just take the Anaconda. And we'll go and pay our respects to uh, Commander Jameson. So here's a here's a wild theory. Thargoids. <clears throat> here's a theory. Just going to put it out there. It's probably completely wild, completely nuts. But just piecing together other conspiracy theories to make a bigger one. Right. So, speculation. Commander Jameson survived the crash at the time. He was taken by Thargoids, who were baddies, but they took him, didn't kill him. And some Thargoids became sympathetic to him and his species, uh, obviously the, the humans. And then there was a section of Thargoids who were good Thargoids on Jameson's side. They became known as the Guardians. The Guardians also are Thargoids, um, <coughs> or, you know, a, a, a split if you like, a, a cell of Thargoids that are good and are here to defend humanity against their fellow bad Thargoids. How about that for a conspiracy theory? And the Guardians are the only ones who can help defend us against the big Thargoids when they come and will survive because of the uh, relationship that Jameson struck up with the Thargoids at the time. How about that for a theory? Now I'm not saying that holds any water, but if it did, what a cool story that would be. Jameson's legacy would be to, to save humanity by having good Thargoids defend us against the bad ones. I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe David Braben's watching this and going, damn, he's just spoiled everything. I think my joystick's broken, guys. <laughs> my, my anaconda keeps swaying. It keeps yawing to the right and I'm barely touching it. It's probably completely Thargoid worn need to replace a joystick after every basilisk kill. Honestly, it uh, my right shoulder is is aching at the moment and that's my keyboard shoulder, not my joystick one. The joystick's in the left hand, the keyboard's in the right. Or oh, yeah, and uh, my right hand shoulder is I don't know why it didn't really do much compared to uh, compared to the joystick. But uh, yeah, and I didn't wake up until quarter past one in the afternoon. <laughs> I went to bed a bit late. Uh, I'm not quite sure what time I went to sleep. It was probably around 6 a.m. Um, and I'm already back in. And so every time I turn my head to the left, my, uh, my shoulder blade at the back is having a little bit of a twinge. But, uh, you know, I'll take that, because it was worth it. It was definitely, definitely worth, worth it. I was only really um, optimistic about or having thoughts that the kill was possible after we'd taken the third heart. I was pretty late on the optimist. Look at that, it's it's swaying to the side, look. It's, <clears throat> I was pretty late on the optimism side. Um, 
I should have probably been a bit more optimistic after we'd taken the second heart down. The second heart was the, the longest one, I think. It just, no, it seemed to be the longest. It, it just felt like it took ages. Because um, <clears throat> we got the initial first heart open fairly quickly, I think. But after that, it was it was very much of an endurance test. All right, we have scanned the system, and it's quite big—34 objects. It's my first time looking at this one. Wow, I like this. Now, how cool would that be if it was landable? So we need to be at 1B, which I'm guessing is going to be this one. Or is that 1A? No, that's got to be 1B. Let's go to it anyway. Once once we scan it, we'll know. Or, or if we have a nav beacon here, which I don't think we will have this far out. No, 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 no. If there's, if there's no population. But anyway, let's go and scan it. How somebody found this, I don't know. So the coordinates then on planet 1b are minus 54.3 and minus 50.3. So they're both numbers very close to each other there. A good landing for Mr. Jameson. What brought him down? I, I'm not up on the law. I'm going to guess it was a Thargoid though. I know I've, I've played Commander Jameson, I've been Commander Jameson in the other Elite games. Is this the first Elite game where you were able to pick your own Commander name? And that you weren't playing uh, Jameson? Hmm. So I might not put this video out for a day or so because I want the, I do want the Basilisk live stream to be the dominant video. I think I can still have that in YouTube though. I think I can still tell YouTube to make that the dominant video, the what to watch next, what to watch next video. Okay, so let's take the orbit lines off. Too much clutter, I think. Look at those very thin rings around that planet. I better think about oh that is the wrong one. Of course, because the top the, the big planet is just one, isn't it? Alright. So is this B then? There we go, there we go. Right, before we get there, I just want to have a little reference of this. So gravity 0.07g. It all looks normal, doesn't it? So Commander Jameson's Cobra is down here, is it? So what I want to do is get into the orbital cruise um, cycle uh, and try and put myself somewhere near the coordinates that we are looking for. We need to stay above, we need to stay above, well we need to stay within the orbital cruise thing. I don't know anywhere where this is. Here we go. Okay, so that's where we want to be. Now I'm going to try and not stop the ship. So we can see that we're quite a way off. So I'm going to go to 270, which is one of the compass points, 270, and that's taking the bottom figure where I want to be. I'm just going to bring this a bit. I don't want to bring it down too far. I do not want to go into the DRP, into the drop, drop zone. I want to stay above that and I want to stay at 270. 270 is only going to move one of the coordinates and that one is to minus 50 which we're all almost there already. I can't slow this shit down. 
48, 49. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the next compass point that's 90 degrees along, which is zero. And that's going to move the top figure on its own. There we are. Okay, and that's moving up, which is the wrong direction, which means I need to be going at 180 and put that backwards. We will correct the bottom figure as we go, but I need to go 180 and that will make the top coordinate go in reverse. Okay, now as we're doing that, we need to correct the bottom coordinate. Going at exactly 180 will make the, the top coordinate move on its own and leave the bottom one. Uh, but the bottom one needs to go back to minus 50. So if we go, and that was at 270 it was doing that, wasn't it? But it was going up, so we need to come down this way, I think. There we go. So if I go at 180, if I go at 160, I'll be bringing the top one down a lot faster than the bottom one, which is exactly what I want. Because <laughs> the bottom one has only got to travel 13, the top one has to travel 50. Once the top, once the bottom one starts to get to 50 again, I can then start. Um, if I, I can then start putting it back to 180 degrees, so that only the top one moves. So I can start doing that now. I think because it's going to take a while for me to get this rested back into place. And I'm staying in the blue zone because that keeps the ship at its ultimate fastest speed. So I'm just going to go a slightly, uh, slightly above 180 just to re-correct that 50. I think that's pretty much bang on there. I'll tell you what, with this joystick being a bit naft, it's very difficult keeping it at exactly 180. Once you're pretty much there, then you start thinking about coming down into the drop zone. I need 54.3 on the top, then I'm happy. There we go. And yes, I have, I should have come in, I should have come in a lot sooner, but it's okay. We're now going to go into glide. We are going to be a little bit out now, but hopefully it won't take too long to get it back. I'm on maximum, maximum drop here before. There we go. I don't want to go into the red, so I'm, I was at the maximum angle. So we are quite a way off. I should have dipped down a lot earlier. Look at this surface though, wow. Okay, as soon as we're out of glide, I'm stopping the ship. Because now we need to go... to zero. A spectacular view, I have to say. That's incredible, that's lovely. Okay, so now we're at zero. So... This is the worst ship for boosting because the distributor on this is really bad. The Corvette would have been a lot better than, than this and I can barely see those coordinates. But we need to get it down to 54 and the top one needs to become 50.3 So we need to go that way. I guess this is the bit where I pause the video. And uh, come back. So I'm just going to head off on this route. On this vector. Um, I'm bringing, because I'm slightly off, 
the compass point of zero I'm bringing down the bottom coordinate at the same time once that reads 50.3 I will switch it back to zero so that that bottom coordinate will move no more and I will keep boosting until I'm down to minus 54 Now that I've said I was going to pause the video, I'm going to keep it running in that way. If I want to pause it later, I can always edit it. But it doesn't look like it's going to take too long. I'm just going to keep mashing the uh, boost key. I don't have the world's best distributor. Again, keeping the level indicator at zero now, I think. I don't want to drop height any more than this. Okay, so the, the bottom one's going to get there before the top one does, so I'm just focusing on that. So 50.8, so we're 0.5 away. We need 50.3. 50.3, come on. The moment we're getting, the moment I'm at 50.39 or 50.38, uh, I'll be zeroing off. I think that's way plenty accurate enough. We'll be able to see the uh, the crashed Cobra from from the air at that at that uh, range, I would say. So, yes. Um, this is my first time here, so I hope I am in the right location with all the right coordinates. And 50.3, we're about to hit that right now. Could be 50.39 for all we know. And there's 50.3. So I'm going to start just bringing this back to zero and keeping it now on the zero heading. Zero on heading and zero on pitch. And just pushing this until we hit 54. Point three, and then I will be bringing the ship to a complete and utter stop. We are now level. Is that 56.9? Uh, I really, I've got a magnifying glass here. I'm going to need it. Yeah, 56. So. <clears throat> My ship is tilting. This is my joystick. I'm going to have to build in a, a bit of a dead zone on the uh, controls because my joystick is beginning to fail. It's part of my Thrustmaster ooh, hot ass deal. We're not far away now then. Hmm. See, um, I'll take my hand off the joystick now, and you can see it's it's tilting. The roll needs to have a a dead zone built into it. This is a thing with Thrustmaster joysticks. At least these T sixteen sixteen thousand M's. They tend to do this. Apparently it's contactless underneath, and uh, oh, here we go. Is this the crash site? Yeah, it is. That was it. I passed over it, and um, I'm staying on course though while the ship slows down. I passed over it due to nattering about the, these joysticks. Now, oh, was that it? There's another one there. I did not go past it, no. So we'll do another boost. I'm ignoring the POIs because they could be anything. I think that's the last boost we're going to be doing. Because we are at 53.4. I probably shouldn't have boosted just then. I'm 
just hitting full reverse now. I want to reverse back. I want to reverse back to 50 uh, to point 0.3. Hopefully there's nothing behind us. Beep 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 beep. Oh, I did go past, didn't I? Yeah, I did shoot past. I'm at 53, not 54. Oh. What a plonker. I was talking too much. Well, I'm just going to keep the ship level. <coughs> it won't take us long to get back. I won't be able to boost, though, guys, so sorry about that. We'll just have to fly backwards for a little while. I suppose I could turn the ship around, couldn't I? If I bring it to a dead stop. I think I will. But I want to bring it to a dead, dead stop first. Right then. So now what we want to do is we want to switch over to 180. Go that way. Now we want to bring the uh, level down to zero and turn that to 180. And I suppose we can. That's probably my shadow. Oh, I'm not being fooled. It might be it, I don't know. Okay. So, strictly no boosting. We are going to drop down in, in height now because uh, we're getting near. Yeah, I should have been here a while, a little while ago, but I made a little mistake. It's all part and parcel. It happens. I could probably afford to boost. Is that it up front or is that just a rock formation? Probably a rock formation at this height. I don't want to boost it, it will be too much. I think that is it guys, I think I can see it. I think that is it. Look at that, there's a canyon on the right there. But this black thing. We're at 54.1. But that to me, guys, looks like the deal. Let's put it to our left. We are very low to the ground. Yeah, that looks like uh, not only the Cobra, but it looks like the uh, the crash site there, the actual, you know where the, uh, the skid marks, if you like. And there it is. That is definitely it. Definitely it. How was this identified as Jameson's anyway? Let's bring the uh, ship to a stop. And let's see if we can get a parking space. Anything close around here will be nice. It's not the most uh, inviting terrain. 
particularly for an anaconda. I may have to go beyond. Go over here, maybe just go a bit past the ship. Ooh, that looked a bit flat. What about that? Depends on the incline as well, I suppose. I don't know. This looks nice. No? Can't tempt you into uh, giving me this space. Like, they couldn't build landing gear more uh, accustomed to landing on bumpy surfaces. I am quite surprised. It is 3303. Oh, look at this. I'd rather just hover at about 10 meters, drop the SRB out onto the ground, uh, and um, dismiss the ship. See, this looks this looks completely fine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We got a blue there. I've just got to get myself in that window. Oh, that's a small one, though. I'll take it, though. If it's if it's really suitable, I'll take it. You have to keep modifying as you drop. That makes slight slight tweaks, but I don't really know which way to tweak it. Um. I'm, I, I'm not going to let it eat my head. I'm going to go this. Find another one. There we go. Let's bring it down nice and slow. Nice and slowly. Let's go see. have to fly past didn't I so I think it's over here I'm just gonna there it is yeah God. it feels just so pathetic doesn't it when you hit a rock like that look at that view from the, the planets and everything it's just so so nice And I did that because the, I put the handbrake on in midair. Well, there is the remains of a Cobra something. Mark 2, Mark 1, I really don't know. We will be scanning the data point in a moment. Oh, wow. There it is. Now this is the conspiracy theory because there's logs here to be to be got, which we'll take a look at. Four logs, um, and also there's the conspiracy theory being that the ship looks intact, but there's no corpse. JJ386, which is probably the computer he was using, or we were using at the time of playing Elite. Let's take a look upwards. Oh, I didn't man I didn't mean to go forwards though. But look at that um look at that great big slash taken out of the out of the roof. I don't know if we can actually get on it. I'm trying to get you guys a great view. Let's take a look. Yeah, you can see it's 
been ripped there. <coughs> so we are on top of um, Commander Jameson's Cobra. It doesn't look like a three, does it, guys? It really doesn't look like a, a Mark III. This is the old, the old style. Let's bring this back. Wow, you hear that? Now let's take a look also in the uh, cockpit. See if we can get any details from from that. Can we go in? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. People were saying, oh, you know, the computers look like they're on. I can't see anything through here. I don't think that's meant to be seen through, so... I think that's the whole mystery, so you just don't know. It doesn't look like the world's worst crash, though. Oh, that's how you know. That's how you know. Jameson. Why can't we have liveries like that with our names on? Oh, it is. There you go. It's a Mark III. We can, can't we? We can put our names on. Wow. It is a Cobra Mark III. It looks different, though. Yeah, perhaps... Uh, Taking screenshots with me on it isn't the best thing in the world. The best idea I've ever had. Let me just uh, drop off here. <laughs> that, that was more of a height than I, I expected it to be. I'll have a little wander around. Because I do want to scan these um, these logs and see what they say. And I also want to see what these red things are. Like this one. And there's some scattered stuff on the right. You can see some canisters there. Uh, which if I am able to uh, pull back here, uh, I can't for some reason. I think it's because I've got, there we go. Yeah, you can see here, let me just pull, pull this back a little. Um, oof, wow, bigger than I thought. Now we'll just play it from this view. Look at the way that the, the suspension goes over this stuff. It's really good. So there's, there's these blue ones, but then there's these brownie ones as well. I don't really know what they are. There's one there, you see, in front of the, in front of the uh, SRV. This guy. And then we have another red glowy thing there. I guess each one of those are the different logs. Why they've not been scooped up and taken away by the Federation, I don't know. And how interesting it would be if there was a, a Thargoid that appeared here now and again, just to just to guard, if you like, Jameson's crash site, make sure nobody was desecrating it. That way it would lend more strength to my theory that uh, Jameson founded the Guardians, who are actually good Thargoids. That's a big rock. It just looked like a shadow as I was approaching it. There we go. Let me just swivel this a bit over that way. I'm quite liking this view, actually. The, the planet surface looks really good. Probably not an idea. Let's 
so we can wander around with the camera locked. The graphics are really, really cool. Well, they really are. Yeah, can't see where I'm going. All right, should we um, should we scan stuff? See what's going on. Let's pop back into the uh, cockpit then. Now we've got our uh, there you go, Cobra Mark III JJ386. That 386 has got to be a reference to the uh, PC chips that we used at the time, the Intel 386s that we were using at the time of uh, playing Elite. <laughs> I'm guessing, I don't know. It might be some other. If it's anything else, guys, and I'm just being stupid, then uh, yeah, let me know. So we have data points, that's what this is, data point, so we'll have a look at that, and we'll give it a quick scan. Let me just take a look at them. Oh wow. Should we take a look at one up close? But I need to slow the camera down. And there it is, in all of its detail. Okay then, let's give it a scan. Once I figure out, that's it. I don't know which is my uh, which is my scan button here. There we go. Let's take a look. See what we got. Right, that's log four of four. So let's do all of them, and then we'll uh, we'll piece it all together. I don't think there's much point in um, doing it any other way. Probably easier to go to contacts. So we've got... Ah, oh, now then. I'm hoping there's going to be another data point somewhere that's off the scope, unless the ship is one. I think the one on top of the ship is another data point, I'd guess. Alright, and we'll go and scan the ship anyway, uh, just to rule that out. Let's go back to where I was at the beginning, which was at the front. Uh, where I was when I first scanned the, the ship. There we go. Okay, so I can't, I can't scan that. Yes, I can. We need to see a number four on that comms panel. There it is. Right, let's have a ready. Uh, before we have a ready, let's turn the ship around so we're not uh, making too much of a noise. We'll just admire the view. Oh, okay. We're still missing... Uh, we're still missing a beacon. Is it the one that was on, on the roof? <coughs> oh, that was pretty pathetic. Let's try and do a better one. Which should be easy it would be pretty difficult to do a worse one than that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe you can fall off the ship and just... Yeah. Alright, let's try this from a different approach. Let's gravity is really not a lot. 
I, I, I could get that height, but I'm not going to do it from that angle because that would be silly. Because uh, we just fly off to the other end. Now then, now then, now then. This is the exact same one I've just scanned. Okay, this is going to be typical. I might have to do this from the air. I've lost track of it, I think. Let me just see if it's come up on the... I've got a couple of data points, but I don't know... No, I've done that one. Let's take a look. I think it's this one. But correcting my SRV to get there. Oh, this is going to be a little bit tricky. No, we've done that one. Okay, let me just nip outside because I think I know what I want. I'm just trying to get it. Ah, okay. I thought there was one on the roof. I must have been... Right, I believe we've scanned that one. See, there it is. It's behind the ship. So we've scanned that one, that one, that one. So it's that's the one that we need to scan. So all we need to do is just drop off the back of the ship which is where we were, and then turn around. There we go. Yay! Okay, that gives us everything, and we'll just have a quick look at the contacts to see what's around. Brilliant limpets, battle weapons. Ah, oh, not really interested in those. This is just taking stuff. There's not really much point taking that stuff back. Okay. Let's, let's reface the nice view. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a sun there, a star, that looks like it's disappeared behind that planet. Right, so now we can go through the logs in order. And here we go. Hey there, kiddo. Now, I know I said I'd be coming home soon, but they've asked me to do something, something important. And, uh... Couldn't say no. I wanted to be there, believe me, but uh, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. And, uh, well, this is one of those times. <laughs> I don't know if that makes much sense to you, but maybe it will do when you're older. Anyway, I thought I'd send you this log. I know it's not the same as being there in person, but uh, it's the best I could do. I'm sorry. I'm not really supposed to talk about my mission, but if I'm going to miss your birthday, the least I can do is give you a good story. Consider yourself sworn to secrecy, soldier, okay? <laughs> I'm sitting in the cockpit, waiting for the old clear. Uh, they want to tinker with her for a while first, but they don't seem to have done any harm. All systems online, everything's... everything's looking good. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't feeling just a little jittery. Uh, you know, I've fought bugs before, sure, but never more than one at a time. Flying up to one of their high shifts, well, <laughs> well that's a whole different story. <laughs> Hell, I don't even know what I'm carrying. Classified, they said. All I know is it's designed to target the bugs hyperdrive so they won't be able to leave the system. Of course, if it doesn't work, I'm just kicking the hornet's nest. <laughs> And that's why I've set my nav system to jump out as soon as I've deployed the payload, you know. Can't be too careful. Wish me luck. That was 
was almost too easy. Thread my way past the perimeter, mass made signature so it get close to the superstructure. I tell you, I've never seen a hive ship up close before. Doubt many people have. It was amazing, kiddo. Beautiful, really. Makes you realize just how smart they are, how how advanced. I admit it. I hesitated for a moment before I hit the button. I had to remind myself it wasn't them I was attacking, just their technology. Uh, as if this micro virus theirs even works. Oh, I watched the payload rocket into the belly of their ship and stuck around just long enough to make sure it hit home. Then I punched the throttle. Whoa! Whew. I'm coming home, kiddo. I'm coming home. supposed to target the hyperdrives. That's what they told me, just the hyperdrives, so we'd be safe again. So we could live without fear. Well, it did a hell of a lot more than that. There were sensors on the payload so I could monitor the reaction and make sure it activated properly. I I'm staring at the data now. It th the weapon is... Lethal. They knew what it could do. They knew what it could do, and they used it anyway. How many have we killed? Thousands? Millions? God forgive us. myself a bit of a situation here, kiddo. My guess is that they installed a program in my ship and set it to trigger after I deployed the payload. All my systems are dead. The, uh, controls are out. Can't even access the escape pod. And the ship is on a collision course. <laughs> and there is nothing I can do about it. We need to inspect your ship, Commander! <laughs> like that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm at least partly to blame. I've gotten old, careless. I should have quit years ago. I guess I should have known they wouldn't be coming back. I and mean, the bugs are dangerous, no doubt about it. But, uh, well, this is mass murder we're talking about. Uh, you can understand why they want to keep it a secret. <laughs> I know some men wouldn't want to admit they've killed thousands of sentient beings. Uh, I guess... I guess the guys back at base think they're doing me a favor by burying me out here in the black. Personally, I'd rather people knew what happened. Even if I didn't come out of it looking too good. I don't have much time. There's a big old plan in my viewport and it's getting bigger in a second. People will talk about what I did after I'm gone, the missions I flew, the things I accomplished. There's something I want you to remember. No matter what they say, whatever garlands they hang on my name, whatever they write in my tombstone, you, you were my greatest achievement. I love you, son.